Hey guys, as you can see, it is a, a little bit late here. Uh, what I plan to do today is a study with me session uh, for Esperanto. And I'm actually thinking about doing this for other languages such as uh, German and Chinese, which are other languages I'm learning. But essentially what's going to happen today is we're going to go over a text together in Esperanto. We're going to like dig into the words and the phrases and stuff and we're going to pull it out and find things that like I don't know and look those up if we need to or I will explain what I'm breaking down and how it means what it means. And we basically just kind of like learn together. And then I'm going to create uh, Anki cards, basically out of those interesting phrases which I want to practice myself. But before we start with that specific one, I do have a request for you guys. And that is if you like this format of like learning a language with me, uh, let me know in the comments below and also, I do plan to be doing, as I said, this for like German and Chinese as I'm studying them. And remember, I am very low level for those languages compared to, to Esperanto. So that will be a lot more uh, different. It will be conducted in a different way, I guess. And there are, are other languages which I have touched on in the past that I do want to get back to, including a couple of conlangs. Um, so I will possibly also be doing ones for those languages. So if that is something that interests you guys, let me know in the comments below and then I will consider whether this is something I take forward, moving forward, I guess. Okay, before we start with our text today, which is actually going to be La Hobbito, which means The Hobbit. Um, we're going to do, I think, you know, a couple of pages from The Hobbit. Uh, I do want to point out a news article which came out for, in the Libera Folio, which means like the free leaf or the free paper in a sense. Um, this is a pretty big Esperanto online publication and they deal a lot with pretty much anything you could imagine. Like they've got news that's internal to the Esperanto community, news that's just like in general and all sorts of stuff and sometimes some interesting stuff. Anyway, what has happened is there is a, this right here. Now this in Esperanto is Deca Oficiala al Dono alla Universala Votaro. And basically that means the 10th official edition to the Universal Dictionary. To give you guys a little bit of context if you don't know Esperanto history. So, Esperanto, as a constructed language over 100 years ago, was based on a text called La Fundamento. It was actually based on stuff before that, but that, that's basically the main text, which means the foundation. And from there, the language evolved actually through use. So people started using the language and as they used the language in different ways, uh, different words and phrases and ideas entered into the language and these things either were like adopted in mass and everyone started using them and then they became part of the language just via the fact that they are now in use or they just disappeared into the pages of history. But in parallel to that, there was a language academy that was established for the Esperanto language. And that was actually established in order to uh, ensure that the creator of Esperanto, Zamenhof, did not become like a tyrant of the language in any way. So he wanted to make sure that anything that would be like officialized in a way for the language would not actually come from him, it would come from the community. So a language academy was established, but it wasn't there to basically create the language. It was there to observe the evolution of the language and via that evolution, find out what has become mainstream. And if it becomes mainstream, wait a while. And then if it's still mainstream, then it becomes officialized and it gets added to something which is called the Universala Votaro, the Universal Dictionary, which sounds way more impressive than it really is. But uh, most people aren't even really aware that this thing exists, but it does touch the Esperanto community um, indirectly in a lot of different ways. Because like, for example, an Esperanto speaker learning from English might use some English dictionary and that English dictionary in turn pulls all its words and definitions from say um, PIV which is a very well-known Esperanto dictionary fully in Esperanto and that dictionary itself in turn uh, references back to this dictionary here for terms that have been officialized. Now this Universala Votaro um, which is sizable but it doesn't cover the entire language because there is a real delay between what becomes officialized according to the academy or recommended. It's, it's this kind of like thing. They, they say they recommend stuff, but recommend basically means officialized in a sense. Um, even though you always have people that will fight against it. But once it kind of becomes officialized or it becomes recommended, then it kind of, it, that's a way of saying the community has agreed this is the language. 
Now, there have been instances in the past where that recommendation actually has changed over time, but I'm not going to get into that. I just wanted to cover off this today. So, apparently there's been a 10th official edition, which considering that the language is over 100 years old, it's over like 100 and 130 years old, more, yeah, something like that. Um, that's not really that many editions when you think about it. Anyway, this one was regarding uh, specifically um, countries, uh, cities, and like languages and stuff like that. So a lot of the stuff that was actually added as part of this dictionary kind of surprised me. I thought this stuff would have been officialized like long ago, but apparently not. So to give you guys an idea, some of the stuff, uh, some of the like country names have existed since Esperanto was created. Like they were there in La Fundamental, in the foundation of the language. But other things like people never spoke about those countries until Esperanto speakers started appearing in those countries and setting up local organizations and groups and communities and stuff. And then they started using a word to reference that country among themselves and then that spread internationally. So they were just, those words weren't quite frequent enough to get the attention of the worldwide Esperanto speaking community, um, unless you're speaking about that specific thing, but like they weren't important enough generally to be added in some specific official uh, addition to this dictionary. So to give you guys an idea, there's actually a reference in here. So it says like in, in the La Fundamental Mem, so in the, uh, the foundation of the language itself, uh, you'll find words for England, France, Germany, Spain, and Russia. So these, these ones have existed since the birth of the language. However, you didn't get like ones for like London, New York, and Paris until the seventh official edition. So it's interesting to see like when things actually got officialized or recommended. See, they say here, list of recommended land names. Listo de recomendate land nomoi. And then uh, there's a few more that came in much later on. But basically what I wanted to do was just quickly skip into this list and look at some of the interesting ones from a historical perspective. Barato. So as you can see here, let's just jump down to see. It's okay. You, you're probably a little bit curious why I'm curious about this one. Okay, so. Oh, where is the actual definition? Must be in here somewhere. Okay, so basically, I'll, I'll, I can't be bothered finding it right now. But the original word for India, Hindiyo, or Hinduyo. Uh, but the Indian Esperanto speakers, when they started becoming more and more numerous, they opted to start using barato to represent their country instead. And it's interesting that I still see in conversations people still using uh, Hinduyo to reference barato, India. Uh, and there's actually some comments in here, which is like someone who's saying, um, I'm particularly happy about the officialization of barato, which according to me shows a... Uh, like a winning for progressive Esperanto speakers. So that's that's a good one. But this one here is one that has always annoyed me. Okay. So here, this is good. Ow, I just bashed my hand. This is good. Hong Kong, which is Hong Kong. Okay. So originally, there was a lot of like fighting between Hong Kong, Hong Kong with a G, and I really hated that, but it looks like that Hong Kong has, has finally won out, which is, thank God, because that G just kind of did not feel right in, like, like for Esperanto speakers in general, well, at least it didn't feel right for me. Uh, so that, that's a good one that that's won out. There was one other that I wanted to bring up. Okay, so this one here. This is interesting. So, Esperanto speakers have for a long time referred to Beijing as Pekino, okay, which is, I guess, that comes from uh, maybe Portuguese or some other language like that. Uh, I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments below. But anyway, I've seen a lot in recent times Esperanto speakers, specifically not from Beijing or from China itself, refer to that city actually as like uh, Beijing. Uh, Beijing or something like that, you know, they're, they're using like the Chinese uh, pinyin version and then like Esperantoizing that in a way or turning it into Esperanto. Um, but it looks like uh, that has not happened and I actually like Pekino and I know China, like in China the vast majority of Esperantists are quite happy with that, although there is a few outcasts who do prefer to use the 
um, Beijing or whatever like the their spinal is. See, I don't even really know it because I can obviously I can recognize it when it's there, but I don't like use it. I just use Peking or and there's a few others, but it, it's an interesting list. Anyway, I've segued for a long time. Let's actually get back to the goal. We're meant to be studying, guys. God, I hate this. See, this is this is a big problem for me. Whenever I do study, I, I segue off and then I just lose time. Okay, so we're, we're going to do this anyway. So we're going to open up Notepad and we're going to start learning. Okay, um, I don't want to do this first chapter of La Hobito simply because um, I've actually done this in my personal time once a long time ago, so that's really easy to me. Uh, ooh, a poem could be fun to do. Okay, so yeah, we could start with a poem. The reason being is because a poem is like a little bit harder to um, to break down. So, okay, so we'll start with this one. So we've got, um, what, what's happening here? So, uh, this, this looks like that scene in The Hobbit where the, the dwarves... Actually, this is a good point. So in this book here, for dwarves, they use the word gnomo. So if we go gnomo. So here, uh, if we have a look, so I'm in the actual dictionary here. You've got gnomo, which is... Wow, this dictionary doesn't even have it. Mincaboldo. That's interesting. So I know caboldo would be from, like, so it says a... Fairy with often like playful humor. So when I see Kaboldo, this is what I think. This guy right here. <laughs> That's what I think when I think Kaboldo. And that is a definite influence from World of Warcraft, of course. Okay, anyway, we'll go back to this. So that's a Kaboldo. It says a, it's like a a fairy that is often playful in humor. I guess they kind of are in WoW as well, aren't they? Because they do like play around and like they've got that stupid candle on their head. Okay, so I might actually add that one in. Kaboldo. Because I don't have that in my dictionary. Even though I, this would be really easy to remember. Kaboldo. So it's like playful fairy. Okay, and then we've got Min Kaboldo, which would definitely be like the WoW version. Min Kaboldo. Kabaldo. God, some, uh, sometimes when I write words and I look at them, I'm like, does that look right or does it not look right? Okay. Now, we go back to Gnomo. So they've got, um, they're basically just saying that a Min Kabaldo is a Gnomo. And if we think about the dwarves, they kind of are in a way. But, like, we've also got this other word in Esperanto for a dwarf, which is Nano. Human, uh, a human and more generally, a living thing whose stature is not normally, uh, well, is like, unnormally, like, short. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of a dwarf, I guess. So, just remember, when you're talking about Lord of the Rings and Esperanto, when they refer to dwarves, it's gnomo, okay? Good thing to remember. Anyway, let's get back to the text. So, uh, did I scroll past that poem? No, let's start with this one here. So, La glassoin displitu fendiju lavazoi. So this is definitely, uh, if you ever watch the movie, the scene where like they're throwing around the cups and the plates and the something and all the gnomes are doing that. Well, now I'm saying gnomes. All the dwarves are throwing things around. This is a reference to that. So I'm saying, la glassoin displitu. So split apart the glasses. Fendiju lavazoi. So the vases, fendiju is like to become cracked. So they should become cracked or Crack the vases in a sense. Tranchiloin defectu. So this is make defective. Now you might think that's a bit of a weird one, but defecti is an interesting one in this part. So it's got make something not usable, not suitable, um, without like value, or to physically like mistreat it. So basically, if you're throwing something around and you're like you're just bashing it, vi defectus jin. So you are like making it defective, you are breaking it in a way, but like you're basically just lowering its value. Okay, so we're gonna go back over here. Kurbigu la forcoin, so that's Kurbigu is to make curved, so to basically the forks. Charbilbon chagrenas TA okazoi, so TA is like those kinds of okazois as events, so those kinds of events 
chagrenas is like to bother or to like annoy or to anger. Um, and then Bilbon obviously is the name Bilbo because those types of things bother Bilbo. Fracasso botelloin brulumu la corcoin. So fracasso is like to smash something. So smash the bottle. So if we have a look at fracassi, fracassi. So we got um, violently and loudly to break apart, to break into pieces. So imagine someone's got like the, the bottles and they just got boom, smashed them on the ground. That's what that's happening right there. Okay, uh, brulumu la corcoin. So brulumu is to like cause something to burn. Now let's have a look what the difference between bruli and brulumi would be. So bruli is not, it's actually intransitive. So it's something brulas. Io brulas. So something burns, you don't brulas ion. You can't do that in Esperanto. So you could say, let's have a look. So you got here bruligi, which is to make something become burned. Oh, there's like a plane flying right over my property right now. Uh, but let's see if brulumu is in here. Brulumo. Okay, so inflamo. Inflamo havas brulumon. Okay, so this is actually... Uh, brulumo here is like a, um, a burn from like a, a wound. Like you've got a burn on your hand or something like that. Or because this is basically inflammation. Um, but it doesn't seem to have the same significance. So generally when you encounter an umi, it means something related to burning. And I guess here they're basically just saying burn the corks. They're just using brulumu for some reason. Maybe because it's more poetic. Taranchu la tukon. So taranchu is like cut something. And la tukon is the cloth. So cut the cloth. La grason suratretu. So that there is to like walk on top of the stamp on something to tread on something and it's the grasso and if we have a look at grasso so here this is a false friend don't don't think they're trampling on the grass outside it's actually something that is easily to like spread across something uh, a substance which normally comes from animal organ or the animals like tissues and stuff so grasso is actually fat like the fat of an animal so they've obviously, I, I can't think of like, um, like I know it's used in cooking, but I'm, I'm not a cook in any sense of the word. So obviously they're in the kitchen and they're like messing up all his uh, stores. Vershu la lacton. So vershu is like to pour out the milk. Yam provisei planken. So yam means already and proviseo is a location for provisions. Provisi is to um, provide or to... Yeah, it's basically to provide something, so... Um, and by the way, there is a little bit of a provisi. If you have a look at provisi, and look how it's used. So provisi arme... Ah, oh, I accidentally did that. Provisi armeon per municio. So that is to provide an army by means of munitions. So you provide someone with something, okay? Or you provide something with something. So, for example, mi provisas uh, mi anamikon per um, amo. <laughs> I, I provide my friend by means of love. Well, I provision my friend with love. That doesn't make sense. Whatever. You, you, you all get it. You, you, you're all loved. Surmaton dorm chambran ostaron demetu. So, surmaton, so maton means mat. Surmaton means onto the mat because we've got a little accusative there. Dorm chambran, so they're actually talking about the bedroom. Dormi is just like the sleeping place, chambro is the bedroom. So this is like the bedroom mat. Ostaron de metal. So ost osto means bone. So what would ostado be then? Well, it's a group of bones, but could it have any specific meaning? The skeleton regarded as the um, like. That part that makes the frame of the body. Uh, but if we go back to here, Demetu. So here they're pouring out the bones of something onto the floor, onto the bedroom floor. Maybe like the bones from the meal that they've just eaten. They're just like, pour it all out on the bedroom floor. Who cares? La porodoin makulu paravin chilflanke. So porodoi means doors, and there's an accusative here. So this is the object. Makulu. So, 
Uh, makula means like spotted, okay? So makulu la porodoin would mean make the doors like spotted. And then, or like um, stained is a better word actually. So it makes it stained. Padavin, so vinno is wine. So that means use wine to make it stained. And then chilflanke means in every direction. And akvon bolantan mergegu fayensoin. So here. So into the boiling water, because bolanta is, um, boli means to boil, bolanta means it's boiling. So boiling water, bolantan akvon, or akvon bolantan, mergegu, that means like to, so mergi is to like put it into the water. So we got mergi, it means to place in a liquid. So imagine like you've got your shirt, you put it into a shirt and you push it under the water. That's what you're doing right there. And then it says Fayentsoin. Yeah, I'll show you the de definition, but it's basically like your fancy stuff. Oops. Okay, so we've got material baked or gloused made out of that earth. So let's think of a good example. Um, okay, let's go. A good way to look this up is if we go to Wikipedia. We go. Fien, fien, so, yeah, there it is. There we go. Yeah, so like, uh, what's the, I would call that like China or something like that. What's a good, what's the English word? Oh God, they use this. Uh, see, I never use this word in English. Like I don't even, yeah, like glazed pottery, stuff like that. You know, like fancy, all your fancy like um, cups and plates and stuff like that. So I actually, I'll probably learn that word. I'm going to add that to my list. Actually, I'm going to copy that entire thing from here because this is not a word I really use, but you know, it's probably something I should practice. So I'm just going to slap that bad boy down here. Yoink. Estas spezzo de argilla tero. Argilla. I don't actually know what argilla means. Let's go look at argillo. I'm guessing it's a type of material. Argillo. Okay, let's go here. Argillo. See, I'm not a pottery person or anything. What is this? Is it just clay? Oh, of course it is. I've never... Okay, you know what? Now that I think about it, I have seen this word before, but I should probably like actually add this because it just did not come to me. So that's going to go on my deck 100%. Okay, so then we've got... Um, Ilin perestango pistado scrupule. So, uh, you're going to use a stick on them. Pistado. So, I'm pretty sure I got a pretty good idea. And no, it's not like using the lower region in any way. So, we've got pezzetigi al pulvorigi per ripetate batetoi. Batetoi. Yeah, so it's what I thought. It's like to like smash away at something with like a, a stick until you break it up into little pieces. You know, like where you got those bowls and you like you smash things up. Um, it, see, I would just say pulvorigi. But, you know, this is actually... Wow, okay, so you see that. I just put that over. This is actually a word from La Fundamento. So it's one of those words I just never use. So I'm going to put that in here. Estas. So, let's continue. Oh, scrupule. So, scrupule. This is a word that, um, like, you'd say, uh, like, scrupule. Come on. Yeah. So, this is a bit of a hard word for me always to translate. Because it's got, like, a scrupulo is, if you look at the second definition, with great precision in your actions. I actually like this definition for scrupulo. So I'm going to say scrupulo. Oh. Scrupulo estas. This one here is the one I'm looking for. Awesome. I'll add that one in there as well. Okay. Uh, se iui chefine resistis la attenzione ilintra la halo jetegu disrule so if anyone so iwi chefine let's have a look what this word is because i'm not getting it straight away 
So, che oh no, of course, okay, I don't even need to look it up. Chefine means at the end, because fine means end, chefine means at the end. See, I would never say chefine, I would just say fine. Se ui fine, but it makes sense. Resistis means to resisted, la tensor, and so a tensor is like an attack. Um, like, yeah, it's just like, uh, it's a more intentional attack. Um, so, ilintra la halo jetegu disrule. So basically this is saying, them, through the hall, throw, and not just throw, like, pelt, disrule. So, rule, ruli means to roll, disrule would mean like, dis, disruli means to roll in different directions, disrule would be like, to roll around in different directions type of thing. Okay, char bilbon char grenas tie okazo because as I said before, those are, uh, matters uh, bother Bilbo. Zorge tre zorge traktu pri lavazoi. Carefully, very carefully, deal with the vases. Okay, I think that's probably enough of a study. In fact, I didn't really do that much study today, but this has already gone on for quite a bit. If you guys like these types of videos and you want to see them, uh, especially for like the other languages as well, just let me know in the comments and I'll see you all next time.